For many of us, picking up a pencil is an everyday action done without much thought. There is a 75% chance that the pencil will be yellow, and if it's a common household or school pencil, it will likely be a number two HB pencil. It is a humble tool, this pencil, yet it has an interesting backstory. Join us as we embark on the evolution of the pencil and how one pencil played a pivotal role in the pencil we know and use today. This is a moment in history called the Conte Pencil of 1795. The predecessor to the pencil came from ancient Rome called a stylus, and later the technique came to be known as metal point. This was a thin, pointed metal rod made of lead or silver, which scratched out a faint but legible mark on paper. This device had limited but continued use throughout medieval times and into the Renaissance. Leonardo da Vinci and Albrecht Dürer are just a few of many artists who used metal point in their illustrations. Although metal point was convenient and precise to use, it was far from perfect. The marks they made were fairly light and they were permanent. In the 16th century, the discovery of the purest form of lump graphite in Borrowdale, England, marked the end of metal point. This graphite was cut into thin shards and used as a replacement for metal rods. Since graphite is much softer than lead, it made a darker and more pleasing mark on paper. The chemistry of the day was still in its infancy and they believed the graphite was a form of lead ore. That is why, to this day, we call the graphite core of a pencil the pencil lead, when in fact there is no lead at all in graphite. It is a crystalline form of carbon. Interestingly, while graphite is not considered a metal, it can conduct electricity. The Borrowdale mine was the only one of its kind in Europe, and graphite had several other uses, most predominantly in the manufacture of cannonballs. The value of the mine became so great that the crown took it over and guarded it very closely. There are stories that when the mine was not in use, they would flood it to keep thieves out. While the graphite mined in England made for an excellent writing device, it was fragile and messy to handle. It was originally wrapped in string or sheepskin. Another improvement over metal point was that graphite could be erased. In the days before rubber, they used a chunk of fresh bread to lightly rub away any pencil marks. Soon, the more recognisable form of a pencil began to take shape when the graphite was encased in a wooden holder. The pencil shown here is the earliest known pencil in existence. It was found inside the framing of a home known to be built in 1630. One would think that this moment in history should be the discovery of this graphite mine in England, and indeed it was a very important discovery. While it did pave the way for graphite pencils, their monopoly on pencil leads was starting to wane. The Germans in Nuremberg discovered how to make pencil cores out of graphite powder, a more common material than the lump graphite. They combined the graphite with sulphur and antimony, producing an inferior pencil lead but still good enough to be mass-produced in 1662. Despite the obvious advantage England had with their lump graphite source and the initial pencil core replacement invented in Germany, France is considered the birthplace of the modern-day pencil. During the Napoleonic Wars, the blockaded French were unable to get English and German goods, and this included pencils and lump graphite. Nicolas Jacques Conte, an officer in Napoleon's army, was tasked to find a replacement for the English pencils. Conte was a mechanical genius who dabbled mostly in hot air balloons, but he proved to be more than capable to solve the pencil problem. After several days of experimentation, he perfected a process of mixing graphite powder and clay into thin rods, baking them in a kiln and encasing them between two halves of a wooden cylinder. Conte also created various hardness of pencil leads by varying the ratio of clay to graphite. The details of the variety of pencil hardness he developed is lost, but today we have a standardised grading system that assigns the letters H and B for hardness and blackness, along with a number to indicate gradations between the extremes. The higher the number, the higher the degree of hardness or softness. Therefore, a 9B is very soft and a 9H is very hard. There is a grade in the middle called HB, which provides a balance between hardness and blackness that is best for everyday use. 
This grading system is mostly used in Europe, whereas the United States adopted their own. They have pencils graded as a number between 0 and 4, where 0 is the softest. The ubiquitous number 2 pencil is the same as the European HB. Conte didn't stop at the common pencil. After patenting his process in 1795, he founded the company Conte a Paris. Over the years, they created artists' pencils and pastels. The company still exists today and caters to artists worldwide. The wooden pencil had one more evolution to resemble the pencil of today. The chunk of bread eraser was replaced by a rubber eraser in the late 18th century, but this was a separate tool. In 1858, Hyman Lippmann of Philadelphia combined the eraser and pencil by attaching a small nub of rubber to the end of a pencil via a metal for rule. He tried to patent it, but it was ruled invalid because his invention was merely a combination of two already known things with no added capabilities. On a final note, I should mention why yellow is a pervasive colour of pencils. In the 1800s, the best graphite in the world came from China. The American pencil manufacturers wanted to advertise the fact that their pencils use the finest Chinese graphite. At the time in China, yellow was a colour of royalty and respect, so American pencil manufacturers painted their pencils yellow to indicate the Chinese association. While pencils may seem simple and ubiquitous, they have played an important role in science, art and education throughout history. Their portability and versatility have made them indispensable tools for invention, observation, planning and creative expression. It is satisfying to note that through all our technological advancements, the simple pencil is still encased in wood with a lead made with the same formula perfected by Nicolas Jacques Conté over 220 years ago. Thank you for watching this moment in history. If you liked this episode, please like and subscribe.